Okay, I'm Sandy Freshy, and I've lived in Jonesboro for five years, a little over five years. We were looking for some property, and at the time, my husband and I lived in Unicoi. My husband's dream was to have 100 acres in the middle of nowhere, and my dream was to be near civilization. And I had been coming over here with my stepdaughter uh, when she was a little girl, uh, every summer when she would visit. This was our go-to spot. So my husband, Bob, was looking online for property and he saw 20 acres just inside the city limits of Jonesboro. And he said, I think we found the, the perfect compromise, <laughs> the, the perfect place for both of us. So here we are. I've been married 13 years, so 13 minus five here, whatever that is. Yeah, and we were, we were high school sweethearts in uh, Northern Virginia. So uh, he found me on Facebook after our first marriages had dissolved and invited me over and I've been here ever since. <laughs> my first impression was that it just felt good. I knew nobody when we were just coming over to visit and, you know, go to the shops and all of that. I didn't know anybody, but it just felt good. Like people were friendly. The Main Street area was interesting uh, and in a certain way it was colorful and I don't know how to describe it any more specifically than that but it was just this impression of uh, oh I have to be there you know I have to I, I, I like this place it feels really good it's a lot of fun I think it's in a sense, East Tennessee's best kept secret. I, you know, uh, I kind of hesitate to, you know, put it out there because it's just, it's quaint. It has a lot of history, obviously, because it is the oldest town in Tennessee. And it has a family feel to it, in a sense, because it, all you have to do if you've been here for any length of time is just stand out on Main Street and you'll see someone you know, you can catch up, you know, and there's always something going on here. I love the fact that uh, Jonesboro uses any excuse to shut down Main Street for a party. I really love that. Would you consider yourself a Jonesboroian? I would say so. This feels like home and it feels more like home than home ever did, like where I grew up. Uh, when you have a large plot of land, um, it's really advantageous to have some sort of agriculture on it. And both my husband and I uh, really, really believe in like the agricultural movement, the movement toward growing your own food, toward contributing to your community through, uh, through food and through um, whatever it is that, that you make and produce. So when we got this piece of property, having that in the back of our minds that, uh, you know, there is a tax advantage when you do grow something my bob turned to me he said well what do you want to grow and and he's a natural farmer he's like he's like he's got the green thumb so i i, I without even thinking i said well let's grow asian pears because when i was in the navy years and years ago decades ago um i had a, a tour in japan and I was welcomed with this beautiful welcome basket and these beautiful, round, crunchy fruits that weren't apples. <laughs> they were Asian pears. And I immediately fell in love. And I knew if I loved them, so would the Jonesboro community. And I was right. And it's just such a joy to grow something that's so delicious that is in my mind uh, something kind of precious 
uh, and then share that with the community through the Farmers Market and Boone Street Market and all of those venues. That's our main venue is the Farmers Market and it really, for me, it's, it's like uh, the treat. <laughs> you know, I get to grow these and then take them down and be in my community you know, and share the, literally the fruits of my labor and then catch up with, with people I haven't seen all week, catch up with their families during the season, you know, and have these relationships. So the work that I do is primarily online with people and I use a system called human design, which is a an esoteric system that involves like uh, the chakra systems and the I Ching and the Kabbalah tree of life and it's a it's a synthesis of, of a bunch of uh, ancient um, wisdom systems and it produces a chart where I can look at how a person um, what consistent strengths a person has and what uh, where they may be sensitive to other people's influence and then from there I can use some of my other healing techniques like emotion code to help them break patterns that allow them to um, live more fully as who they are. And one of the reasons why I'm in graduate school for mental health counseling is that I realize that a lot of people that I see, um, a lot of people are really into that, okay? They have that kind of a, a worldview. But for a lot of most people who are maybe struggling with something in their lives, there's a lot of work that has to be done before they can get to the point where they're even ready or have the, the energy or capacity to sit down and understand themselves through a system like that. what I love about Jonesboro. There are so many people here who have so many unique things to share. And, and, that, and maybe that's why I felt really good here. My first impressions is that this place feels good is because it is a prosperous place because we do come together and we have so, so many talented people here, so many caring people here and everyone has something to share. I guess what has been unexpected is like the influx of people who are coming. I don't know why that's surprising to me. There are people here from all over the place and there and they're more coming, which is surprising to me. I'm a bit concerned about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned about that. Uh, because anytime there's rapid growth in an area, it really has to be managed carefully. The resources have to be managed. Um, the uh, uh, introduction of different viewpoints and different cultures and worldviews has to be done in a graceful way. And I don't know if there's a system for that, but I know that if it's not done that way, it can lead to trouble and it can, it can lead to unsustainable growth and those kinds of things. My hopes are that we maintain the small town culture that we have while uh, doing that delicate dance of sustainable expansion. I feel like it's good to have an influx of, of people from other places. Um, and, it, and at the same time, it's this delicate dance where we don't want to lose what we have. We want to build on that. We want to expand that. You know, we have a lot of creatives. and. We don't want to lose that to commercialism. We have a lot of people who are um, into handmade and hand grown and uh, hand baked and you know hand painted, all of that. And if you, we grow too fast, we're kind of seeing it on the outskirts of like the downtown area. If we grow too fast, then that co corporate 
commercial cookie cutter feel will start to take over what we've created and, and, and what we've created is kind of an oasis.